Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the videos titled Atomic Orbitals. Now we've discussed the shape of S orbitals. Let us come to the shapes of P and D orbitals. The P orbitals, instead of S orbitals which are spherical in shape and which are very symmetrical, the P orbitals are not symmetrical in that manner. Every P orbital has two lobes and these two lobes are scattered on two sides of the nucleus. It is as if you have these avocados and they have two lobes, the nucleus is in the center and the two lobes are on the two sides. So it is these lobes which are and the nucleus is in the center and these lobes are identical, they are symmetrical and they fall on both the sides of the uh, of the atom, uh, of the nucleus. So this shape is known as, it looks like a dumbbell, therefore it is known as the dumbbell shape. The P orbitals are the shape of a dumbbell. And there are two lobes, symmetrical lobes on both sides of the nucleus and the probability of finding an electron, now these are boundary surface diagrams. So the probability of finding electrons at the nucleus obviously is zero because electrons are never present in the nucleus of an atom. So in the center you have this node that is uh, you don't it is the probability is absolutely zero and these are the two lobes of p orbitals. There are three p orbitals in every um, shell. So in every so for example there would be three two p orbitals which would have the value of L is 1 and N is 2. These 3p orbitals are all of them, all three of them are identical in shape, in size and in the energy of electrons. The size of 4p, uh, 3p orbitals would be larger than 2p orbitals but they will have the same shape, all three of them. And the energy of electrons would be more. The size of 4p would still be larger and larger, the shapes would again be identical but the, the energy of the next shell of the electrons would be more and more. But then what is it that's different in these orbitals? What makes them different? These three orbitals, if, we, if you imagine them together in an atom, you can. Uh, that is when you realize that when would it be that you have six lobes six different lobes and all of them have negatively charged particles. So what is the shape in which they orient themselves so as to have minimum repulsion? Because all have electrons, they repel each other and since they repel each other, they would orient themselves in a way where they can have maximum distance. And that orientation is possible when they have, when you imagine these three lobes, these three p orbitals to be perpendicular to each other. That is, if one of these orbitals is along the x-axis, then the other should be along the y-axis and the third orbital should be along the z-axis. So the three p orbitals are oriented along the three axis, right? The d orbitals on the other hand, they have, they have four lobes instead of two lobes, they have four lobes. It's like a clover leaf, do you see? They have four lobes and if they have four lobes, then how do they orient themselves around the nucleus? These four lobes, they orient themselves like, um, I just try to fix these avocados in a tray. They are like a clover leaf. I wonder if you can see, yeah, you can. So they are along, they are two lobes, like two P orbitals along each other on they look like that but they're not actually the p orbitals they have four lobes and each d orbital we know that the value of l for d is two and how many d orbitals are present in any shell there are five d orbitals present and these five d orbitals now if they have four lobes each how would they orient themselves so we find that these five d orbitals they also are different and what are the shapes like there is one, the first orbital is known as dxy. So if these are the three axes, now I've made only two axes in this plane and I've just projected the third one to make it clear that how these are, to make the difference between them clear. Out of these, you know, five, you will see these four look alike. These four look identical, but there's a difference between them. These three are quite similar. They are oriented along the different axes. So let's see, this is, the first one is dxy. 
if this is x axis and this is y axis the four lobes they orient themselves between the axis these four lobes they orient themselves between the axis and uh, the dxz also is between x and z and y is projected you can imagine these two axes to be in the plane of the whiteboard and the projecting one is perpendicular to these moving towards you and behind the blackboard so the xy is the lobes fall between the two axes the yxz or xz falls between the two axes x and z the four lobes the uh, orbital d y z falls between the y and the z orbitals between uh, sorry the axis the lobes fall between the axis you can see this these are the four lobes are they forming yes if these are the four lobes then if this is the x axis this is the y axis then these are x y orbitals they fall between the two axes and it's the same for these three but the fourth one that is x square minus y square does not fall between these lobes do not fall between the axis rather they fall over the x and the y axis these two balls would be along the x axis then these two would be along the y axis if these two are along the x axis then these two should fall along the y axis right so this is how these are oriented so this one is actually different from these three in being that its lobes are oriented along the x and y axis and the name of this orbital is d x square minus y square now the last orbital although all four of them look identical their orientation is different this fourth one has a different shape altogether so what is the shape like let me i got these avocados today to explain i'm so hungry just looking now the, do you see the fifth orbital the dz square or dz square in this the two lobes are oriented along the z uh, axis and in the middle there's a donut kind of a probability there because this is all a probability picture so the probability is like there's a donut in between and the two lobes are above and below it do you see this there's a donut and the two lobes of probability lie above and below it here so this is the shape of the dz square uh, orbital so these were the shapes of the orbitals now let us talk of the nodes i told you that the n or uh, the s orbitals they have one node one s orbital does not have a node and the 2s orbital has one node and i told you the number of nodes was n minus 1 the actual formula for number of nodes total number of nodes is n minus l minus 1 in the case of s orbitals l is 0 therefore it was n minus 1 so uh, the radial nodes because that was a radial node it was along the radius now in addition to the radial nodes in these cases that is the p and d orbitals we have another kind of node and that is known as the angular node or you have nodal planes let me just explain what this nodal plane would be now you have these two lobes around the x-axis if these are the two lobes around the x-axis then we have a plane between them this would be this would be now if this is the x-axis what you see in front is the y-axis and and do you see this there is one axis on top and one is this plane that we see so there are two more axes the y and the z axis which pass through it and that is a plane a total plane which has a node because these two lobes you can imagine are on the two sides of this plane and the plane surface this is a plane which is falling between the two consisting of the x and the y axis so this is known as a nodal plane or the angular uh, nodes the number of angular nodes 
in any orbital is calculated by the value of L which means a P orbital would have one angular node but a D orbital would have two angular nodes it will have two nodal planes and it's very easy to understand why would that be you can imagine now I want to make the four yes if the, these are the four orbitals forming a d orbital then this has now two nodal planes one you can imagine this plane this is planar so you can imagine one plane to be going across here and another one going here so there are two nodal planes in every d orbital one along this side and one along this side so if the value of l is 2 then for d orbitals then d orbitals have two two nodal planes or two angular nodes so what is the total number of nodes that are present in in an orbital then then the total number of nodes is given by n minus 1 where it is the sum of the angular nodes and the radial nodes the angular nodes are given by l and the radial nodes as i told you where the probability of the previous shell's electrons is more there the probability of these electrons would be less so we we'll do these nodes and um, uh, more in details in the next video but uh, right now i'd like to end this here you know the shapes of the p and the d orbitals please come back for more videos in chemistry Thank you for watching.